Hey y'all, I'm Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine on the headless side of the house. In today's video, I'm going to discuss WP GraphQL Smart Cache, the newest extension in the WP GraphQL ecosystem. I'm going to also talk about its utilization with Next.js and the Apollo client. So let's get stoked and dive right in. In order to follow along with today's video, just a couple of prerequisites that uh, you'll need. I have a WP Engine account with a WordPress instance already spun up here. As you can see, I have a production site called Smart Cache for this video. You will also need to download the WP GraphQL plugin and the Smart Cache plugin. So let's get right to it. I'm in the WP Engine user portal and Within this portal, I can seamlessly click to my WP admin here. And I am in the WordPress admin. This should look familiar to everybody. We'll go to plugins. And we can deactivate Genesis Blocks Pro. That's fine. Let's add new. And let's search for WP GraphQL. There's WP GraphQL. Let's go ahead and install that. Activate. And then let's go to the WP GraphQL Smart Cache GitHub repository. And then you would go to the um, green code button and go ahead and download the zip. I've already done that. So we can navigate back to our WP admin. I'm going to add new and then upload a plugin, choose my file from my downloads. There it is. Latest version is 0.3.2. Open install. And we've got what we need. We've got WP GraphQL and the smart cache extension. Now, before we dive into smart cache, we need to understand what WP GraphQL and GraphQL are. GraphQL is an open source data query and manipulation language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling queries with its existing data. So in other words, it's, it takes any database and throws a schema on it and exposes it visually as a graph, which makes your data descriptions easy to understand. Let's look how, let's see how that looks uh, visually. So when you download WP GraphQL, and for you users that might have already um, played with it or messed with WP GraphQL, you'll have a GraphQL option on the side here. And then there's two ways to see your graphical IDE or the editor for GraphQL. You could do this here or up top here. So I can just click on this and it exposes panes here. As you can see, they're blank right now because we haven't written a query. And if I hit Query Composer, uh, it exposes the WordPress data that you can ask for all on the left-hand side here. So that is pretty cool and gets me stoked because I didn't have to code anything or write any docs or whatnot. Jason Ball, who created WP GraphQL, made it so that you just install this plugin and it exposes that GraphQL schema. Now, let's write a query here a very simple one to see what it looks like and what it returns. So if I write a query, we're going to call it query and then my query, open up an object and we're going to ask for posts type. And within that post, that post has um, nodes and within those nodes, there are fields. So let's just ask for the title of all our posts. So if we press play here on the right hand side pane, we're going to get exactly what we asked for in the structure that we asked for it, as you can see. So that's pretty cool. That's the power of WP GraphQL. Not only does it give you exactly what you want back in the exact shape and form, but it's also optimized for performance using the data loader method and other techniques as discussed on WPGraphQL.com. However, there's still issues you can run into. Now, 
As stoked as I am on WP GraphQL, there are common issues when developers use it to decouple WordPress. So as you can see, I made a request to the WordPress backend via WP GraphQL, and there's a cost you'll pay to make that request performance-wise. Now, if you query WordPress too much, you'll time out your WordPress server. Uh, there, were, there are ways around this, especially when using Next.js, and I have a blog post that I discussed like best practices and optimizations for that. I'll leave that in the video description. Now, the other issue that's a general difficulty in web development is invalidating the cache to get fresh up-to-date data and then making it performant for speed. Uh, thanks to the WP GraphQL Smart Cache plugin, we have a solution for these common issues. So let's hover over back to the WP GraphQL Smart Cache repo and going down to the readme file. So I'm in the readme file of the WP GraphQL Smart Cache repo, and it's the latest plugin in the WP GraphQL ecosystem, and it allows you to cache your GraphQL request from WordPress. Once they are cached, they do not hit the WordPress server. They hit WP GraphQL Smart Cache. This way, you get better performance and use fewer resources on the WordPress server. Stoked. Now, the plugin is engineered so that it works specifically with your WordPress hosting platform's network caching layer. So in this case, the plugin's first integration support is with WP Engine's cache layer, which is Varnish. So just to clarify, three features that will work currently on any hosting platform that we are about to dive into is the object cache, persistent queries, and then cache invalidation. Host specific supported features is the network cache. And in this case, it's WP Engine's Varnish. The network cache and cache invalidation will only work on supported hosts, but there are still benefits for sites on any host as, as I stated. Now, I have an account with WP Engine as we saw with the plugins I need to make this work. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into the features of the plugin and its nomenclature. So the first topic and words I want to go over within WP GraphQL Smart Cache are cache, miss, cache, hit. So if you publish a post that's brand new, you want to be updated on that data, that fresh new post update right away. Uh, when you update this, it'll cache miss because the actual WordPress server will run those queries. WP, w, excuse me, WP GraphQL Smart Cache understands what query was executed and then it determines what actions it should listen to within that new data action in order to make the query. So let's see this in action. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and go into my GraphQL option menu on the left-hand side. Let's go to settings and there is my GraphQL endpoint. I'm gonna copy that. All right, and then let me go into a browser that I haven't been authenticated into with WordPress. Here's that, and then I'm gonna put this here, copy that, and then we're gonna make a query um, as we did with a WordPress backend, um, but within the search bar here for our simple query with a, uh, asking for all the post titles. So let's do that. So the syntax for that is GraphQL question mark query. And then that's going to equal open curly braces posts. And then we've got nodes. And within those nodes, I'll have a title. We'll ask for the title. And then let's hit that URL. Okay, let's make this so you can see that. Okay, now there's our titles coming back from our post via JSON. And we're gonna open up the dev tools here. So command option I, look at the <clears throat> network tab here. And within the headers, Let's look at the cache, xcache, and 
you can see that it's a miss. Let me blow up the screen a little bit. I think I can, whoops, <laughs> there you go. So that's a cache miss. So the query is simple. I'm asking for all my post titles utilizing the HTTP get method in order to maximize the optimizations of the smart cache plugin. So I'm using get. Since this is a brand new request, it's a cache miss as shown. Now, after this initial cache miss, because this is new data, every subsequent, subsequent request of this query is cached on WP Engine with Smart Cache to optimize the speed and performance of your GraphQL query without hitting the WordPress server. So essentially, let's go ahead and see this in action again. So let me hit the URL a couple of times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> hit that, I love doing that. And there, cache hit 10. And as you can see, let's go to the timing. And this is being served 39 milliseconds. That is that is fast. So I'm stoked about that. Now, two of the hardest things in web development are cache invalidation and naming things. Most developers will tell you that. So let's see how cache invalidation works in WP GraphQL Smart Cache. In this image, let's go ahead and look at my first post title here. And let's make sure we can see it. So we've got my first post title, WP GraphQL Smart Cache Rocks. So let's change this title in the WordPress admin and see what happens. Back in my WordPress admin, I'm gonna change this title to WP GraphQL Smart Cache Stoke, and then exclamation, just one exclamation point. Let's go ahead and update that. Hit update, so that, is a new title, new data. Going back to our browser here, let's go ahead and visit the URL again. So once I hit that, let's go to the GraphQL document, go to the headers, And there you got there you have it. So since I changed my first post title, first of all, it reflected up here within the JSON as well as the header because it's a cache miss. This is new data and it's invalidated. So what happened is WP GraphQL Smart Cache listened to the event change in WordPress. It realized that it was a data change. It invalidated the cache, allowing WordPress to serve the accurate data. Now that's cache miss Stoke. The response time for this, let's check it. Three hundred and twenty-eight milliseconds. That's that's fast. Now, after the cache is invalidated again due to the update, the request and query are now cached, and every request from then on will not hit your WordPress server. So we hit this URL several times, and it'll cache it and it'll serve it from the cache layer. Now this takes advantage of the network cache layer and gets accurate data upon changes. Now this is such a game changer. It allows developers to offset the responsibility of toiling with cache invalidation to the Smart Cache plugin. Jumping back into WP Admin, let's talk about persisted queries. Now a persisted query is a query string that is cached on the server side along with a unique identifier. Now, clients can send this identifier instead of the corresponding query string, thus reducing request sizes dramatically and response sizes are unaffected. Now, this is a major benefit of using persisted queries since large queries can become bottlenecks for client performance. Now, WP GraphQL Smart Cache provides support for persisted queries and can be used seamlessly with Apollo Persisted Queries link. This can, all, this can be done on any hosting provider as well via post request. So let's see how the feature works. Let's go over to the 
GraphQL option here and then go to settings. And then over to the save query, saved queries tab. And let's check out what we have here. In the saved queries tab, we have a option here to display saved query documents in admin editor. Let's check that box. And then save changes. When you check that box and save changes, you'll see a new post type in the sidebar here, and that's called GraphQL documents. Now let's click into GraphQL documents. And this is a familiar editing user interface now, just like how you edit post, but in this case, it's your GraphQL document. Now there are a few ways you can identify your unique persistent query. Let's do alias names for this video example. Now the first step, let's go to my graphical IDE and grab a copy of that query that I made earlier. So let's grab that, copy that, go back to GraphQL documents, hit add new, and let's start filling out the fields one by one. The first field is the title field and let's name this get post titles. Uh, you can name this anything you like, whether it's the actual operation name of the document or something that will remind you of what this query document does. And then the second field is the actual document field right here of what the query string is in a JSON object. This query string is asking for all post titles that I'm going to post in here. Lastly, there's a description field to add any description you prefer for your own reference. I'm just going to say this query grabs all my posts titles. Cool. All right. Now WP GraphQL Smart Cache gives, gives each of your individual GraphQL documents an alias name or ID. As you can see here on the right hand side of this menu under alias names after you hit update. So I've saved it, I hit update and it gives me an individual ID right here. Now that ID is fine and all, but y'all, I don't like it. It's too long and it's just a bunch of like gibberish. So let's manually change this default query ID to the name of our choosing, which it allows you to in Smart Cache. All right, so let's do something very simple like get titles. Okay, let's add that. And don't forget to hit update here. Okay, we've changed our alias ID and name for this GraphQL document persisted query. Now let's go over to the browser and test it out. Now I'm back in my browser here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into this search bar here and instead of asking for this data on my GraphQL endpoint via request object, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this, call it query ID, and then this is gonna equal the get titles that we named our GraphQL persistent query. And it works just the same. That gets me stoked. So instead of an object I had in there, the alias name we made manually works the same. We now have this document persisted on our server and reduced an upload cost as well as avoiding a long query string with our alias name. Now this is just a snippet of what you can do with persisted queries on WP GraphQL Smart Cache. Now I encourage you to dive into all of it in the readme and the repository. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is see how this works with Next.js, the Apollo client, and incremental static regeneration. Let's navigate now over to the front end in our Next.js application. And I'm using a starter tutorial that Jeff Everhart on my team made, and I'll leave the GitHub link in the description of the video. So let me go ahead and pull up video, visual, visual Studio code, excuse me. And let's break down here first 
what's going on with the Apollo client configuration. So as I go to my Apollo.js file, what is going on here is I'm using the Apollo GraphQL client to optimize its features to grab the data on the client. Now, WP GraphQL Smart Cache plays nicely with Apollo. And in this example here, this is the code for my uh, Apollo.js file within the lib folder. Now, the first thing that's happening here is the first const you see here is setting our link as Apollo link, okay? Now we set this as the HTTP link to process the GraphQL endpoint right here as we call it, which contains our data. So this is the um, environment variable and the environment variable uh, method that Next uses, and you can proce process it with the code right here and then append that with GraphQL. Then we put a key to use the use get for queries constructor right here, which is an option, a fetch option, because we want that for, for optimal performance on the smart cache plugin using get. Now the second const here is exporting the Apollo client right here and configuring it as network only. Now that it, what that does is it becomes a fetch mechanism exclusively with the cache being now handled by Varnish and WP Engine. Now that we have this configured with our Apollo, for our Apollo instance, let's go over to the dynamic route file and talk about incremental static regeneration. Now, here's the dynamic route file and the parameter that I have within it is the slug. So we're grabbing a posts detail page via its slug. Let's scroll down here to the very bottom where we want to focus our attention on. So you can see I added the revalidate prop right here and set it to a five second interval timed right here. This will trigger a regeneration of this post detail page, hence incremental static regeneration. Combined with WP GraphQL Smart Cache, the instant and freshly updated data will be received and rendered quickly and cached after that. So let's try this right now and run the command npm run build to run a production build of the site and then run the command npm run start to pull up the browser and go to a post detail page. All right, let me clear all this and npm run build. And then let's run npm run start to pull it up on the browser. We've got it up on the browser. Now let's hit the post detail. You can see here, this is the detail of this WP GraphQL Smart Cache Stoke titled post. Let's go back to WP Admin, edit the post, see how fast it revalidates and then updates to the latest post and see how quickly it responds back once it's cached. So let's go to, back to my WP Admin here. Let me change the title here. And then let's put up another uh, text here. Let's say this is the best plugin ever. Let's update that. Okay, now that let's go back to the browser. If we hit refresh, let's wait five seconds. There it is. Now we've got all the data that we needed and validated and then updated for that fresh data. Now, once it's cached, you can see that it's just static and cached being served from the varnish layer in WP GraphQL Smart Cache. Stoked. I'm super excited about this plugin and this video and the blog post I wrote. The WP GraphQL Smart Cache plugin is a tool that supports and solves cache invalidation and caching optimally for WP GraphQL queries. The nuance and difficulty of cache invalidation within headless WordPress have just gotten easier thanks to Jason Ball and Mark Kellner and the whole entire team around WP GraphQL. I touched on some high-level key features of the plugin. 
I encourage everyone to dive into the repository and readme as mentioned to get their hands dirty, explore all other awesome features in it, and the plugin. Now there are more changes and updates to come, so as always, stay tuned. Always love to hear your feedback, thoughts, and projects you're doing in Headless WordPress. Also hit us up in our Discord. Thanks again, and until next time, happy coding!